As a creative entrepreneur and content creator, my desk setup is the center of everything I do. I spend the majority of my time here editing photos and videos and having a pleasing aesthetic space and also functionality on my desk is highly important. I've been using Logitech gear for the longest time on my desk, which helps out with the functionality. But now with the MX console, there's a whole new level of speed, accuracy, and functionality added to my editing setup. And I don't know about you all, but having speed and functionality on my desk is probably the most important thing for me and my business. Not only does it help me get more done, but it makes it more pleasing while I'm doing that. And I also don't have to remember all the key commands and can get around just so much faster. Now this video is sponsored by Logitech and they were nice enough to send over the MX Creative Console to me. However, keep in mind, I've been using Logitech gear for the longest time. I'm a big fan of the brand. So while I might be a little biased, let's actually talk about how you can use this tool and how it will work out in your workflow. It comes in two sections, the keypad and the dial pad, both of which can be used separate of each other, which is nice. So this starts out the customization that you have with this tool. And this is only like the top of the iceberg. The keypad has nine display keys, which can be customized as well as page buttons and will connect to your computer by USB-C. It also comes with a stand that you can use on your desk that includes cable management. This will keep your cable clean while it's connecting to your computer and also stand it up for better visibility. Its small footprint also means you can travel with it if you want to, and it's also super light, so it's not gonna add too much to any of your luggage if you are traveling with it. The dial pad has buttons and knobs, which are extremely smooth to use, and you can customize them as well. So you have a bunch of different options that you can use here. Both parts of the Creative Console have nice padding on the bottom of them, so they also won't slip around on your desk when you're using them. This is important because generally you're gonna be using them with one hand. I'm generally using mine with my left hand and having it slip around would be the absolute most annoying thing. So they do stay on your desk. They don't move around a lot, which is awesome. The dial pad uses batteries. So it uses Bluetooth to connect to your computer. There's a knob on the back so you can turn it off whenever you want to. And again, it's easily movable and packageable if you need to take it with you on a trip. But that's enough of focusing on the specs. Let's actually talk about the most exciting part about the Creative Console, which is how you can actually use it. The customization you have in the Creative Console is honestly the most impressive part of it, which is why I wanted to focus on how you can actually use this in your own workflow. So to start out, we're gonna jump into our Logi Options Plus app. And this is where you're making the changes to all your Logitech gear. You can see here we have my mouse and keyboard, and also the Creative Console broken into its two sections, the keypad and also the dial pad. When we wanna go ahead and add customization to these, we can click on one, and then from there we can customize the keys. Now, to start out, if you don't wanna sit around customizing your own stuff, you actually have already predetermined customizations for all the Adobe apps, and you can also create some for your own apps. For the plus up here, you can see all the application profiles. And what's cool is you're gonna see all the applications you have, but also there's a whole marketplace of different profiles that you can use for different apps. And people are gonna be updating those all the time. So if you don't wanna take the time to customize yourself, someone else is probably already customized for that app that you use. You can see here some of the stuff I've already added to mine is Ableton Live for all my music producers out there. If y'all don't know, I majored in music production. That's actually what I do more so than photography. I have Lightroom Classic and Photoshop and Zoom. But right now, we're on the main page of my desktop, which is why I have it set up to open different apps for me. Now, that's one cool thing about the keypad as well is the fact that it's gonna change depending on what you're using. So when I jump into Lightroom, it's automatically gonna switch to the settings for Lightroom. Same as when I'm on the desktop, so on and so forth. So right now I have my desktop set to just open stuff that I use often. Like for instance, JPEG Mini. If y'all aren't familiar with JPEG Mini, it's an app that will make your photos smaller without reducing the quality. This is great for uploading stuff to your website or if you're trying to send stuff to your couples and you don't need the files to be huge. But as you saw, I was able to just click the button real quick and it went ahead and opened up. And this is nice not having to search for it or go anywhere else. I know I can just quickly 
open the app that I want to use. Let's actually, let's see that in action again. Here's Evoto, which is another photo editing app that I started using recently. I still do most of my edits in Lightroom, but Evoto is great to use additional to Lightroom because it has some AI features inside of it. You see that I was able to quickly and easily just open that app. So I love setting up the keypad for application opening when I'm on the actual desktop. You can use it for so much more and you also have these nice page buttons here so you can quickly swap to different pages. So you can set up your pages for maybe like, here's all my music stuff or here's my working things and so on and so forth. So if I wanted to make a new page, I can hit the plus there. You see I have a new page and I can thumb through the two pages I have. And you see all the options here of what I can add. But under advanced, we have multi-action macros. So you can set up all types of different things. So if I want to put a macro action here, I have a whole new action I could do. Go to a web page, keyboard shortcut, play a sound, run something. There's so many things you can do. So you can have even almost like whole setups where you can just click a button and it'll turn on certain things and open things for you and you can go ahead and start working. So that's the really cool part about the customization here is there's so much more I can do. So while we're still talking about the keypad, let's go ahead and open up Lightroom. And you'll see my keypad automatically changed. So now it's for settings just working for Lightroom. And again, this stuff is customizable as well. Looking at my options here, you can see I have stuff like one star, three star, five star, pick a flag, auto white balance. I switched to cycle upright actions, which is really cool. Develop mode. And all of that, again, is customizable. You can have multiple pages if you want to. So if I had a second page as well, oh, it's already here, look at that. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the fact that like there's stuff pre-made into it. Like I didn't even realize there was more here, but that's already pre-made into this profile. Now I like to customize stuff and I customized it just a little bit. Like I was saying, the cycle upright actions is really cool. The way that works pretty much is that if I were gonna pick a photo, let's see if I can find one that works, and I want it to straighten it up. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a real stickler for having straight photos, so I don't see any crooked photos here. But let's just, let's try with this. I'm gonna go into develop mode, and then I'm gonna cycle my upright actions. You see it goes through all of them. I usually use level, that works for me. But again, you can get to all this stuff extremely quickly right on the keypad. And it's just, I could go on forever about how awesome the keypad is, but let's go ahead and close up Lightroom and talk about the dial pad. So the dial pad also works the same way the keypad is working, but it has different options since you have this nice big wheel in the middle and also other buttons. Now, personally, I like to use both of these together the keypad more so for launching stuff and then the dial pad for actually in the app. So both of these together are gonna to be a great combination. Just the same way I can come in and customize my buttons here. And you see I have my customization for the main page as well as different apps like Lightroom or Final Cut Pro, which I use for my video editing. This one for me, the dial pad is probably the most useful mainly because I don't have a nice way to scroll through Final Cut that feels good to me. Now, while I'm using the Logitech mouse, which does have a little side panel on it, it's just, this is so much more easier to use and it feels really good. So let's actually, let's see that in action. So again, so you'll see if I go back to my desktop, I'm able to launch Final Cut here from my button there. And I have this full wedding day video I've been working on. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And now I have my dial pad for a couple of things. You see here I can scroll, which on a long video like this, which is so far, I think I'm about an hour in. Yeah, it's very useful. I can zoom very easily. Now again, I can scroll easier. A lot of times I do cuts throughout the whole timeline. So if I wanna cut all these different layers, so I have a button for that. 
just to cut all the way. I have an undo button. I also have a cut for just a single lane. So if I just wanted to cut there, but not the rest of the lanes. And I also have a redo button. So for me, this is extremely, extremely useful. Now, this is very useful, but one thing I forgot to talk about is the action ring. The action ring can be a game changer if you're using it in your different apps. Let's actually see this inside of Lightroom. So I'm gonna launch Lightroom again real quick. And so on my dial pad, I have the action ring set up. And honestly, this is gonna be the new way I'm gonna edit, <laughs> like really. So I'm gonna come into this photo. We'll go into develop mode using the keypad. And I'm gonna edit it like normal. I usually put my preset on it. And then from here, I start making adjustments. But with the action ring, my adjustments will show up right here. These are most of the adjustments that I'm using all the time. And I can just click on it and drag for those adjustments right there. So now instead of having to go to the side here and click all of this, which is still doable, I can do it all from this one little action ring. And just kind of quickly make the changes I need to. Another thing that's awesome about the action ring as well is it's fully customizable. So I can change the options that are on the action ring as well as use the dial pad to actually make those changes rather than just using my mouse and clicking on them. So it's a really great option for quick and easy editing. And the amount of just like speed you get from this is a big deal. I also have my dial pad set up to make micro changes here. So this is up and down on the keypad. So I can make those changes if I want to. I can do everything here as well as with the action ring. Here's my before and after. And like you saw, this is quick and easy to get through everything. I can also toggle again. And now I can swap through my photos. I can zoom in and out. There's so much I can do and the ability to customize everything is probably the biggest part of all of this. Like you saw in Logi options, I'm able to quickly optimize everything per app. And I haven't even sat down and really got into doing like the majority of what I could do with the customization. So this setup here and the fact that everything is changing per app is absolutely mind blowing. So far, I'm really loving the Creative Console and how it works into my own workflow. The customization alone can make this useful for any creative, no matter what tools you're using. You can even use it for music production, animation, or drawing. The possibilities are absolutely endless. The Creative Console is gonna start shipping in October, so definitely make sure to check out the link in the description below to pick up one for yourself. I highly recommend it, and I'm honestly gonna keep using it myself. Just with the options I found with video editing alone gives me a huge amount of functionality on my end because I am not the best video editor. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think in the comments below about the MX Creative Console and if you would work it into your own workflow, especially for video editing or photo editing. Also, if I do a live stream, I'll try myself to actually use it so y'all can see it in action. Maybe I'll do a dual screen thing so you can see my hand while using it. If you wanna see that, let me know in the comments as well. I hope this works out for you and I'll catch y'all next time.